Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. This is another in-depth weather discussion for August 31st, 2021. In this video, we're going to be talking about how the remnants of Hurricane Ida is going to create some widespread significant conditions of flooding and tornadoes within the Mid-Atlantic, even into the Northeast. And then we'll also get into the nitty gritty as to when the next tropical system could be coming around, potentially when we could have our next hurricane within the Atlantic Basin and whether or not some other areas that are tropical could impact land. So if you guys are new to the channel, please be sure to leave a like on the video. Leaving a like on the video actually helps me get this out to more and more people, essentially helping me spread the information as widely as I can. I also want to ask that if you are new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with all the latest information. We have hit 15,000 subscribers, guys. Thank you guys so much. Wouldn't be able to get this high. And uh, I, as I said, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for the support on our live stream that we had with the landfall of Hurricane Ida. Speaking of Hurricane Ida, taking a look at the GOES-16 satellite imagery here. And you can clearly see this is the remnants of Ida with its counterclockwise flow for the most part. A very large expanding band here from the uh, basically the eastern side to the southeastern side extending all the way down into the Gulf of Mexico. This is creating your tornado risk. This giant band here is where your tornadoes are most likely going to be spawning off of. And we've had a history of a couple storms that have consistently produced some quick spin-up rotations, some quick developing tornadoes, and then they wither away. So that's the unpredictability of this as this continues to propagate further and further. And then, of course, you see all of these showers and thunderstorms right here within a consolidated area, and that's what's going to create your flooding risk. It's going to basically be areas right over the same spot that's going to continue to create more and more risks uh, for showers and thunderstorms, essentially creating your big flood, uh, flooding risk. I also have a little bit of a monsoon that's ongoing over here in uh, areas of the southwest, so they are starting to get some relief from some of the drought down there, so that's the good news. Otherwise, not really all too much across the United States uh, with that. Looking at the Storm Prediction Center, this is uh, for today's convective outlook, so it'll expire by uh, midnight tonight into uh, early tomorrow morning. But we do have a 1 out of 5 on the severe weather scale here indicated in this dark green and a 2 out of 5 indicated in this yellow. So wherever you guys are in this kind of dark green or yellow, you guys really need to watch out for some severe weather that could be developing. And then we also, uh, if we take a look at this from a probability perspective for each parameter, uh, not really a, a whole lot of a hail risk, obviously, because Ida is more or less a tropical system. It doesn't like dry air, except for if you're in northern, uh, northeastern portions of Montana. So watch out for that. Wind is definitely going to be a huge threat here. You can see the uh, giant yellow area. That is a 15% chance of 58 mile per hour winds within a 25 mile radius of course the brown area is the five percent chance as well so uh wind is definitely going to be a threat and then you also have a five percent chance for tornadoes indicated in brown with a two percent chance of tornadoes indicated in green taking a look at tomorrow's convective outlook this one's a lot more significant than the one today and uh, you can already see a massive two out of five in the severe weather scale here enveloping much of the mid-atlantic but you also have a three out of five on the severe weather scale here indicated near the dc baltimore philadelphia metro areas and that covers a lot of ground for the most part so if you guys live within these areas i highly recommend watching out for this i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to live stream tomorrow night i'm probably not going to chase it uh, because i'm going to be dealing with my own issues here uh, at home and so i'm just basically playing catch up with uh, how much I've covered Ida and its landfall. So probably not going to storm chase. Uh, for those of you who wanted to see me storm chase, I apologize. But uh, I just realized that I'm possibly going to cover it live here on the live stream. So stay tuned to that. Looking at the hail parameters, if you're in the Dakotas as well as in Nebraska, you do have a 15% chance of one inch size hail or larger within a 25 mile radius. So uh, typical supercells over there with strong damaging winds, although the damaging winds will most likely be attributed to the mid-Atlantic with a giant 15% chance for 58 mile per hour winds within a 25 mile radius. And then you also have a big tornado risk here, massive 5% chance of tornadoes within a 25 mile radius indicated in the brown and then in the yellow 
I don't know why they just immediately put yellow as a 10% instead of a 15%, but it is what it is with the Storm Prediction Center. 10% chance of a tornado within a 25 mile radius located in the following areas in baltimore dc arlington which is around dc alexandria which is also around dc uh columbia and then areas south of philadelphia so basically wilmington delaware if you guys live over there if you live in dover if you live in southern portions of new jersey really would want to watch out for that as this develops further and further and then the other thing here, too, is that this is a big, huge flooding risk. I'll uh, zoom it in for you all to actually see that there is a massive widespread area here for flooding over the next three days. And this is accumulated all into the next three days because this gives you a general sense as to how widespread this uh, potential flooding risk could actually be. So... Uh, if you're in the kind of green here, you're in the marginal risk for flash flooding, 5% chance for flash flooding within your area. If you're in the yellow, you're in a 10% chance for flash flooding. That is a slight. If you're in the red, that is a 20% chance for flash flooding within your area. And then if you're in the pink, which uh, is a pretty significant substantial area here, expanding all the way over from Morgantown, West Virginia, all the way through Harrisburg, into uh, north of Trenton, into the northern portions of New Jersey, into the southern Hudson, uh, the Hudson River Valley, I should say, uh, extending all the way further into New Haven, Connecticut. If you're in those areas, you really need to watch out for a high risk of flash flooding, a 50% chance of flash flooding within your area. So uh, definitely would need to watch out for this as this continues to move about. I would say from now until Thursday morning is going to be the big threat there for flash flooding within your area so big thing to watch out for taking a look at the uh maximum accumulated rainfall within some of these areas uh it's as i said very much so widespread within uh places near the appalachians mid-atlantic even into the northeast areas in the dark green you can see two to four inches of rain areas in the yellow that is four to six inches of rain and then areas in the orange is six to ten inches of rain so if uh, you guys live within these areas. As I said, highly recommend watching out for all of that. Now we're going to take a look over here at the NAM 3 kilometer model. Once the uh, tropical system is over land, it's actually uh, recommended to use models like these uh, compared to when they are about to make landfall. So uh, here we go with the uh, NAM 3 kilometer model on its approach and its uh, ascent through the mid-atlantic into the northeast so here if you want to take a look at the timings look over here this is an eastern daylight time because i live in the eastern daylight time zone so uh, lucky for you all but <laughs> here we go with the uh, model runs uh moving about if i can actually get this to start and i will here we go there is already some showers and thunderstorms that are expected to move on through overnight tonight into tomorrow morning Sure, it could be light at times, but that'll begin to accumulate, and that's the big thing there. It's not going to be just one storm that's done and over with. It's going to be a multiple round of storms, and by noon tomorrow, look at how significant some of these rain bands could be, especially in southern portions of Pennsylvania into northeastern portions of Pennsylvania, right along the border of the Mason-Dixon line. Look at that. Significant amounts of heavy rainfall is expected with this storm according to the nam three kilometer and as i said this is just going to continue to accumulate 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 and this is going to be uh pretty big in some of these areas uh runoff off of the uh, main appalachian mountains could attribute to some significant flash flooding and we really need to watch out for that as this continues to propagate further and further towards the end of tomorrow which speaking of which let's move on past that and you'll see how these showers and thunderstorms here become pretty widespread, and the reason why there's such a widespread tornado risk, a giant 5% chance, is notice these other showers and thunderstorms here that extend into North Carolina, Virginia, potentially even South Carolina in some spots. This right here is what's going to basically create your uh, giant tornado risk, and the reason being is because you have your general counterclockwise flow around Ida here, and this outer band here is going to continuously create some of that spin. So you have wind coming down from the south at the surface. And then you also have wind coming from the north that's pushing Ida up to the north and east. That is 
basically coming across like this. So what's happening is, is it's creating a lot of this spin in the atmosphere, creating supercells or mini supercells, which are just strong thunderstorms in this instance. And uh, these strong thunderstorms could potentially produce tornadoes within some of these areas. Now, just because we have this setup doesn't mean that every single storm is going to produce a tornado. However, it is very unpredictable in nature in regards to this system, especially since tropical systems are very unpredictable with uh, with how those supercells actually propagate, develop, mature, and potentially become tornadic. So big thing there is that if you are under a tornado watch, which there most likely will be a tornado watch tomorrow, please stay weather aware. Please pay attention to your local weather forecasting offices as things could become very unpredictable really quickly. And uh, we really need to, you know, keep both eyes open tomorrow if the tornado threat is as bad as the Storm Prediction Center says it is. Let's finish it off here with the uh, rest of the evening. You can see how a lot of these showers and thunderstorms are really becoming significant through the main watch area of the tornado risk. And the uh, big thing here is that it most likely will be a time frame of 4 p.m. to most likely midnight as to when the tornado threat will be at its peak. So uh, within these areas here of Maryland, Pennsylvania, Delaware, even portions of D.C. and Virginia, that's the time frame in which you guys need to watch out for. It's going to be a uh, rush hour coming back home, and with the amount of rainfall that this thing is going to be bringing as well, visibility is going to be very terrible across the board, and so you won't be able to see a whole lot even with these storms coming into your general vicinity. These showers and thunderstorms will be approaching New York City, the strongest ones at least, will be approaching New York City uh, and areas up here closer towards New England at about midnight tonight, or midnight, not tonight, midnight Wednesday and Thursday. And this is going to really start to consolidate more and more. This is what's going to create a bit of a flash flood risk up in the Northeast, but this is going to, this is uh, not going to be as significant at this time period, um, at least according to the models as this propagates further and further. However, what does seem to be significant here is the total accumulated rainfall over the next two days. And you can see within some of these areas, you do have some browns right within here. And these browns, according to the monitor at the bottom, if you can see the color code, that indicates about 8 inches to maybe even 10 inches of rainfall. And the maximum seen on this model actually gets up to 11 inches, so almost a foot of rain and some of these amounts could actually be larger could be heavier than that because if you do have uh some showers and thunderstorms that do decide to stay over one specific area for an extended period of time just based off of luck in this instance uh you could potentially get uh, some rainfall amounts that could be even uh even be over a foot and uh, that's obviously not that's obviously not very good for areas that are kind of prone to flooding so definitely need to watch out for that if you're near the susquehanna river definitely need to watch out for that if you're near the potomac river definitely would want to watch out for that as well uh just one of those things to where you gotta be weather aware in this instance and uh, for flooding big thing here is that if you see a flooded roadway turn around don't drown don't drive into flooded roadways at all all right looking at the five day graphical tropical weather outlook and so we're uh, kind of shifting gears from a remnant of a tropical system to now potential tropical systems that could be impacting areas or even not impacting areas. I mean, we have Tropical Depression Kate right here, which was a tropical storm, but is heavily overshadowed by the obvious threat of Ida. Kate is not expected to do a whole lot. It's expected to stay over water, so that's not really going to be a huge threat to even the island of Bermuda. Not going to be a threat, all right? You do have a couple areas here that are going to be watch worthy. First off, you have Tropical Depression 12, which was recently designated, and that is expected to become a hurricane according to most models. Now, whether or not this will be able to impact land is a big question here as this continues to move about, but uh, it has already formed a tropical system next to the uh, Cabo Verde Islands. And usually when you have storms like this, this typically allows more time for this thing to consolidate and eventually form into a hurricane. And uh, most hurricanes, most famous hurricanes that you've actually uh, you actually remember, are typically attributed to uh, this. So definitely something to watch out for. 
uh, in the models. We'll take a look at that in a bit. And then we also have this disturbance over here that is in the Caribbean. And the thing of it is, is that as of right now, it doesn't have a huge chance of formation with it only have a 20... Oh, geez, with it only having a 20% chance of formation over the next five days. But this is definitely something to watch out for because we hinted that there could be a potential for another tropical system to form after Ida. And there's uh, it's monsoon season over here in Central America. And these monsoon conditions can create a lot of showers and thunderstorms. And those showers and thunderstorms could even consolidate and form a tropical system like Ida. That's actually uh, how Ida originally formed was all those showers and thunderstorms as well as a uh, a tropical wave that propagated forward kind of just congealed into one and formed into one giant tropical system so uh, whenever we see stuff like this gotta watch out for the tropical system regardless flooding is uh possible within some of these areas here in central america as well as possibly even the greater antilles so watch out for that looking at the satellite imagery here uh that is just basically the atlantic basin you can see well not a whole lot of kate i mean kate's pretty much kind of uh living on a prayer at this point and uh, that's the reason why it's not expected to impact land is because not only is it pretty weak with it having about 35 mile per hour winds as a tropical depression, it's also very small and it's also very much so away from land. And so uh, not exactly expecting too much from that. You can see there's Ida, of course. You also have tropical, dep uh, tropical depression 12 moving south of the Cabo Verde Islands. And then you have your tropical wave right here, which is... Uh, Definitely something to watch out for as this continues to move about. And uh, that area of interest could be something to really watch out for, especially if it propagates further northward into the Gulf of Mexico, because practically anything that heads into the Gulf of Mexico is really going to be a huge threat. All right, we're going to take a look now at the cyclonic vorticity from uh, basically 500 millibars, which is the mid-levels of the atmosphere, a little bit above a mile uh, above the surface, okay? Big thing here that I want you guys to pay attention to is the shaded areas. The shaded areas of orange and red indicate cyclonic vorticity. And so the more of that, the more red it actually is, the well, the more organized a tropical system actually is. And therefore, you have your most likely named tropical system, whether it's a tropical storm, whether it's a hurricane, either or. The point being is it's a tropical system. Another thing that I want you guys to pay attention to here is these wind barbs, all right? Uh, we'll talk about where these wind barbs are going to be heading off to eventually, but uh, just realize that if you see a wind barb that looks something like this, the direction of the wind barb in which the wind is heading from, uh, well, in this case, is going to be from right to left, and these little sticks at the end indicate how fast they actually are. So we'll talk about that there in a bit. But looking forward through this model run here from the GFS, we have a couple things to note here. First off, we have 12, which is uh, going to try and consolidate, but you also have this high-pressure system right here. You can vaguely see it, but you have this general clockwise flow that high pressures typically attribute. And what this is going to do is this is going to steer it most likely into the Atlantic, and most models tend to agree with this uh, general act, if you will. And so that's the reason why... If this tropical depression does form into a tropical storm, which for those of you who are curious, it could be Tropical Storm Larry, that's the next name uh, up, then uh, that's probably not really going to impact land a whole lot. But we also have another developing high pressure system that is basically going to form just to the east of Bermuda. And this could basically flip everything on its side, more or less. We have... This other tropical system, or the remnants of, uh, I should say, Kate, more or less, that's trying to, you know, hang on. It's in very unfavorable waters at the moment, but it's getting steered south with all this uh, clockwise flow for the most part. And so you can see here in the developing model runs, it actually gets taken a bit further north because you still have that high pressure here. You still have the high pressure right about here. You still have this other system that's trying to head a bit further south, and they're going to basically try and, you know, congeal with each other until the point to which this actually weakens significantly and this high-pressure system moves further and further east. So now 
This tropical system is caught in the flow. It was originally attracted by this low pressure system because that's what low pressure systems typically do. And now it's caught in the flow of this high pressure system. And as I said, clockwise flow. And so with the wind shear here, it's going to guide it along with that flow. And it's going to carry the system more or less into open waters, similar to what happened with Kate. Now we also have another tropical wave that occurs over here and this is pretty interesting because you have your high pressure now that's up here but this high pressure that was originally steering kate is not exactly all too existent so what will this tropical wave do as this propagates forward we don't know that's definitely going to be something to watch out for as this continues to move about but uh, definitely something to watch out for with that and then another thing too here to watch out for is uh, in hindsight me looking at some areas in the gulf of mexico we also have this trough that's going to be moving on through here, attributing with Ida. And typically what happens with these troughs uh, down here into Florida is that sometimes they become stationary. You have a lot of showers and thunderstorms that form over the same exact area, and they form these little remnant lows. And in this instance, uh, we have this developing low pressure system that sits around Florida, which could potentially be creating some showers and thunderstorms within your area. But... You'll have some vorticity that's in within that area, and whether or not that could form into a tropical system within a short period of time, that's definitely something to watch out for. Definitely something to uh, have to watch out for by the end of this weekend for another tropical system, maybe a sleeper tropical system that could form and potentially you know, create impacts over there as well. But anyways, there is 12... 12 continues to move out into open waters as we anticipated the tropical wave down here still shows that it is active here still shows that it is active but unfortunately for its lifespan it kind of just meanders at this point and doesn't really do a whole lot so in the near future right now it doesn't look like any sort of tropical activity is favorable here to impact the land besides the area that i mentioned by the end of this weekend potentially some vorticity stirring up maybe a developing tropical system that could be a tropical storm potentially and so we'd have to watch out for that now we're starting to get to the end of the model run here and once we start to get to the mid-range to the end of the model run that's when things get really sketchy it's not exactly set in stone as to whether or not this will actually happen or not but i want you guys to watch here in the gulf of mexico and the caribbean for the most part and because it is monsoon season we could continue to see those showers and thunderstorms to beginning to develop. So at the end of this model run here, we actually have some uh, some of those showers and thunderstorms that begin to kind of congeal, and they actually form in the Gulf of Mexico. And if you guys were here for my talk about Ida, this actually, um, this time of year in the Gulf of Mexico, those warm waters are very unstable at the moment, and they are very much so above average. So that's the reason why when a tropical system gets into the Gulf of Mexico, they start to begin to intensify significantly, maybe even rapidly intensify. And, uh, you know, this is not set in stone here, right? Don't take this as if this is the final product. This uh, may not even be here the next time we talk about this. But the big thing here is that the Gulf of Mexico is still very unstable at this time of year. And that there is still some showers and thunderstorms that could potentially be lingering even from the ongoing monsoon. So at any point in any given time, you could potentially get something that could form over here in the Caribbean, in the Gulf of Mexico. And I will give you guys more and more updates as this continues to propagate further. That's going to be the end of the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're new and turn on uh, notifications as well. Share this with friends and family and on social media like Facebook and Twitter to try and get this information out as much as possible. Uh, one thing as well is that, as I said, thank you guys so much for coming out to my live stream uh, for the landfall of Ida. I want to mention here real quickly that if anyone wanted to see, the, um, see what Matt, our storm chaser, was experiencing live in the system he did upload his video today uh, today so i will put a link to the video in the description down below if you guys want to go watch it feel free to do so it is uh, quite uh, quite interesting and quite excessive as to what he found over down there in louisiana so as i said as i said thank you guys so much for watching please stay safe have a good one and yeah
And as I said, thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> See ya.